Hello, everyone. My name is Bernadette Santos, and with me is my colleague, Tim Pine. We are with the Office of Environment, Health, and Safety. Today, we will be talking about the latest innovations about water quality monitoring. Tim Pine will be talking about the need and improvements in this area first, and I will be talking about the Smart Cover Pilot Program after. Tim has been on the Berkeley campus for 20 plus years and has great perspectives on this topic. Thanks, Bernadette. Well, I have some good news and bad news for all of you who are watching. The good news is that incidents like this, this, uh, this gushing sewer manhole happen uh, a lot less frequency than the a lot less frequently than they did uh, 20 years ago when I was work first started working here. The bad news is when they do happen, um, the severity of these incidents is just as bad as it was way back then. And the key for us is early notification. The faster that EHS can respond to um, an incident like this, the more we can uh, have chances to mitigate the damage. And the problem has been that we've always relied on human eyes and ears to notice the bad thing happening and then call us. And that sometimes has resulted in major delays. And this incident, this fish kill occurred um, as recently as last year. Um, this was a firefighting foam uh, release that hit Cornices Creek and ended up wiping out nearly the entire steelhead trout population uh, down there at Albany Village. And a big factor was we didn't hear about it and didn't get down there until the damage was done. Um, also still happening with alarming frequency are water main breaks. Um, these are because we have aging infrastructure. We have a lot of construction going on in our area. And the problem with water main breaks is the chlorine in the drinking water that's gushing out uh, is equally toxic in an aquatic environment as well as all the sediment that's being released. And then if we uh, can get out there early enough, we can actually take measures like these uh, dechlor mats. These tablets actually um, deactivate the chlorine. And so that's important to get there quickly to deploy those. And if we don't hear about it, the worst case scenario is uh, this damaging flow goes all the way out to um, the bay. And then this is uh, the result. We have to actually put up signage all the way down to um, San Francisco Bay. And so the good news is, is there's technology now that uh, gives us early warning of these incidents. And Bernadette's going to talk about that. Thank you, Tim. So here's an example of our smart cover monitoring system. This one is installed underneath a manhole cover. We also have a few of these suspended up over the creek channel uh, monitoring our stormwater system. Some of the smart cover features include a satellite network, which allows us to have better connectivity when Wi-Fi or cellular is sparse or non-existent. It's battery powered, so the system's functional even in electrical outage and batteries last about two years before needing replacement. Uh, there's a dashboard which can be accessible by mobile or the web, and I'll show you a screenshot of this shortly. It has real time monitoring, so the data, uh, we capture the data every 10 minutes and it sends alerts to the users if an alarm is triggered. Uh, we have trend alerts, which allows us to see and be notified of any upward or downward flow levels, rise and fall. We have the ultrasonic sensor, which is fairly accurate. It can record data up to one tenth of an inch, and this sensor allows us to visually monitor the creek, even in the dark. It has rain monitoring, so we can do an overlay with the rain data and um, our sanitary sewer data for regulatory purposes. And it has great customer service, so if we ever need to understand the data or troubleshoot, they're always available to help. So this is an example of the dashboard that we have uh, via the web. Um, as you can see, we have four sanitary sewer installations and three stormwater installations. This is an example of the chart that each system um, collects data. So as you can see on this day, we received an incident and this happened to be a foaming agent incident that went to the creek. What had happened was when this level was triggered, um, we received a text message to say, hey, there is a problem in this in this area, you should check it out. So what did we do? We, we had our facilities folks go to the area where we had a smart cover and they were able to see that there was a foaming agent incident. And you can see 
how bad it looks on the creek. It's just bubbles. So this is how it's supposed to look like in this area. So we've had many campus successes, including two sanitary sewer overflows prevented and two illicit discharges detected, including that foam agent incident. We've been able to mitigate potential property damage and regulatory fines. Our engineers and planning department also has a better understanding of our sewer system and stormwater system infrastructure. And facility services could also be redirected to other preventative maintenance issues um, and activities versus always constantly doing visual inspections at these high spot locations. So now my colleagues going to be talking about going into the future. Thanks, Bernadette. So what are we hoping to do now that we have this system? Well, first of all, we definitely want to secure more funding. So this is a soft uh, plea for anyone who's watching um, to help support this great uh, system that we already have the beginnings of and we'd like to do more. Secondly, the uh, technology uh, or the, the potential here is, is pretty vast. Right now, we're simply monitoring rise and fall in flow, but we have the opportunity to install other sem sensors going forward sensors such as those that measure turbidity or conductivity. There's even sensors available now in the market that can tell you whether there's a sheen of oil or grease floating on the surface of the water you're monitoring too. And then of course, we, um, we can use all the data we're starting to gather as a planning tool and as a design tool going forward as campus um, you know, begins to either replace or build out more of our sewer and stormwater infrastructure. And then lastly, you know, we want to use this tool to help us engage with the campus community about the need to, uh, you know, protect our creek. And we still encourage um, people to, anytime they're on campus, to put their eyes on the creek. And if you do happen to see something that doesn't look right, you, of course, can always call us and there's our EHS number. Um, for more information, you can certainly can reach out to either Bernadette or myself. We'd be happy to talk to you in detail about this. And the campus also has a really excellent um, Creeks website. You can see the URL right there. Um, we've got a page about monitoring and lots of other information about our watershed. And I want to make sure that um, I thank uh, Alicia Klatt. She's our EHS training and instructional design specialist for helping us put this together. And of course, our awesome facility services, utility plumbers, these are the folks that run out there any time of the day or night to make sure that everything's flowing properly and that they can respond to any issues or alarms. So thanks very much for tuning in. Thank you.